Hi, this is Joanne, and at the time I'm filming this review for you, the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland, and it's also on the border with France, um, has just recently captured its proton beam and has collected some data. Successfully, I may add, because of course they had issues uh, a few years back when they tried to start up, so it's been plagued with a series of problems. Um, but this is a big project, and it's, it's hard to imagine uh, all the work it takes to get a big project like that going. So a lot of people wonder, well, why should we spend $7 billion on a project to make something uh, that's looking for what? Uh, we don't know. Uh, so uh, today's book actually sets out to try to answer that for the general public. And this book is called Collider, The Search for the World's Smallest Particles. But we're not just searching for particles, we're searching for so much more, as author Paul Halpern lets us know in this book. So we're also looking for this concept of supersymmetry, where every particle that we know of has a partner uh, that's symmetrical, but maybe uh, slightly different. Um, we also want to understand a little bit more about the four uh, forces that act upon our world, the weak, the strong, the electromagnetic, and gravity. Most of us are really well aware of our gravity and electromagnetic forces, but the other two are very important at the subatomic level. Uh, we also want to understand, astronomers are especially keen on trying to understand what is dark matter and how much of it is out there and what's it composed of. So this book addresses all of these issues. Um, what, what Paul does is he introduces us to the world of all these subatomic particles, and one may call these the particle zoo because it is quite uh, um, broad and expansive, and there's just so many different particles. And like an exercise instructor might say, you've got to want it, and I, that's what I have to say about it for to understand particle physics. You've got to want to understand particle physics. It's not just going to accidentally fall into your head because it's not always necessarily intuitive. So a lot of particles came up into the minds of people as some theoretical gleam in their eye, uh, but then it can only be proven by experimentation. And the best way to experiment at a very, very tiny level is to smash things into walls and smash things into each other. And that's the purpose of a collider or an accelerator or a synchrotron where you're going to accelerate whatever it is your, your model is, whether it's protons or ions or uh, anything else that, that you can think of, and then to collide it either, either into each other, into something else, or into a wall, and then collect data when you, you're capturing the different energies that are lost, uh, different particles that may come off. And to be able to do this, you really need a sophisticated uh, set of data collecting capabilities. And that's what we find actually in the LHC. Paul's book is wonderful because I found the most enjoyable part was following the history of searching for particles as well as uh, the types of machines that are used for that, including our superconducting super collider that America was really aiming for but we didn't quite uh, get uh, thanks to political and financial concerns, um, even though it would have made us an even more um, stronger force. Uh, with respect to particle physics. Of course, we have Fermilab with the Tevatron uh, up near the Chicago area, which is doing a fine job. Of course, the LHC, though, is apparently going to be able to use stronger, um, higher uh, energy levels to be able to collide particles. Uh, the book also discusses potential future plans for a linear accelerator. Um, so it, it's a very good coverage of the whole field, and I think it's, it's he does, Paul does a really good job um, like I said, the particle thing is a little tricky to get, but um, it's doable. It's doable, and the history is absolutely fascinating. So, um, the next book I want to recommend uh, is a book that takes a different approach to trying to explain the Large Hadron Collider. And this book is, of all things, a pop-up book. And uh, it's called Voyage to the Heart of Matter. And I can't even get this into the full screen. Um, and you can see here it's only got maybe four or five pages, but of course being a pop-up book you know you're in for some surprises. So I'm going to do the best I can. This book is packed full of information and so if you were trying to conceptualize what kind of detectors are there and you know what is the, the, the structure of this um, apparatus, this giant experiment, then you've got all sorts of uh, things coming to you. Uh, it starts really 
I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is showing sort of the landscape and where the different detectors are. I'm not going to show you everything in this. Um, the next page, let's see, I'll lift this up, uh, gives us an idea of where the detector is. Here's the detector. And actually, if you look up here, this is the ground, and this is indicating that, of course, this detector is very deep underground so that we do not get interference from cosmic rays that are, uh, that are always bombarding the Earth. Um, but then you get, an, you get an idea of the scale if you look at the cars on the top and you compare the other. The next page is something of a behemoth, and it is the detector, and it has extra pieces that you actually have to put together, um, tabs to insert and things like that, and so I don't think I'm going to attempt that now for the camera, but you've got little extra instructions here uh, and information galore, um, pleated uh, things, pull tabs, uh, all sorts of fun things. Next page is the best, I think, as far as being uh, the wow factor, especially for my kids that are pretty excited about this one. So, yes, that's proper pop-up. And this uh, page is actually talking about uh, trying to understand the beginnings of the universe via the work at uh, the Large Hadron Collider. Um, and, of course, again, it's got its little pages uh, with proper pop-ups, uh, fun, interesting facts, important information. Now this is not for your five-year-old. My ten-year-old was even having a bit of a trouble following it as well, but he asked some really important questions uh, when I was showing this to him. So I, I think that's useful uh, overall. So uh, this book, The Voyage to the Heart of Matter, is a little hard to come by, uh, but it'd be great to have if you know someone who's really fascinated with this uh, giant experiment. But the book Collider by Paul Halpern, easy to find. I think you would really like it if you want to understand more about the project uh, that's going on um, and the history of these projects. So I'm recommending both, especially if you're curious about the world's largest science experiment. Okay, thank you so much.